morning on the viewer. My name is Jeffrey He. Today I would like to make an introduction about the highway engineering. I will briefly talk about the semi-rigid pavement that we chosen, which is interlocking concrete block pavement. Interlocking concrete block pavement has been extensively used in a number of countries for quite some time as a specialized problem solving technique for providing pavement in areas where conventional types of construction are less durable due to many operational and environmental constraints. Interlocking concrete block pavement usually used in footpath, parking areas, and etc. So we have four objectives. The first one is to understand the materials construction processes involved in highway development. The second is to determine the type of rock pavement you and map research or information of chosen rock pavement, which is interlocking block concrete pavements. And the third one is to obtain crucial information related to damaged rock. And the last one is to identify suitable and cost-effective or preservation technique to overcome the issue. Okay, next I will going to show a video about a process of the installing the interlocking rock pavement. So let us watch it. Excavation. Ensure sufficient ground material is dug out to accommodate the required pavement layers, ensuring it is evenly formed and compacted and any soft spots are made good. Installing the sub-base. Pour in the sub-base and roughly distribute using a shovel or machine on site. Here, we're using type 1 aggregate. Add more material as required and level off, making sure it's evenly distributed. To ensure solid compaction of the sub-base, it is recommended that you compact no more than 75mm to 100mm at any one time. Measure the depth, making sure it's to the correct thickness. Compact the material using a vibrating plate to achieve a fully compacted smooth texture surface. Installing the road base. Pour in the road base layer. Here we've used a DBM concrete and roughly distribute with a rake across the entire area. This layer is normally machine laid but can be hand laid depending on the project's requirements. Tip: DBM concrete should be loose, not too stiff. Add more material as required and level off, making sure it's evenly distributed. Measure the depth, making sure it's to the correct thickness. If using a concrete, leave to cure for the specified time. Compact the material using a vibrating plate to achieve a fully compacted, smooth texture surface. Tip. Installing the laying course. Pour in the laying course and roughly distribute with a shovel or machinery on site. Here we're using sharp sand. Carefully position two pins and create a straight string line. Drop in the screed rail. Measure from the top of the finished paved layer down to the top of the screed rail. This will help to ensure the next layer is installed to the correct compacted thickness. Screed out any excess material using a screeding rail, the top of the curb and a screeding bar. Ensure this layer is screeded to the correct thickness. Compact the material using a vibrating plate to achieve a fully compacted, smooth texture finish. Alternatively, sand can be loosely screeded, then blocks placed and then vibrated using the post-compaction method. Take out the screeding rail and make good the void that is left. Cover with sand and then screed over again for consistency, ensuring a smooth texture surface. Installing the finished paved layer. Install the blocks, creating a single laying face across the installation. Ensure the blocks are tightly connected to the adjacent block. Once the outer edge is reached, some blocks will need to be cut to size. Lay the blocks across the voids and mark up where the cuts need to be. Alternatively, measure the void to determine the size of the cut required, then mark up ready to be cut. There are three different methods of cutting blocks. A hammer and bolster, a block splitter or a diamond tipped cutting blade. If using a diamond tipped cutting blade, use an appropriate dust suppression technique using water. Cut the blocks as accurately as possible, ensuring the correct PPE is worn. Install the blocks and cover the final installed area with jointing sand using a brush. Here we've used kiln dried jointing sand. Make sure at all times when using kiln dry or silica sand, you wear a dust mask. 
Tip. For blocks with little or no chamfer, it's necessary to fill the joints with kiln dried sand before compaction takes place. This is to prevent chipping. Compact, using a vibrating plate, consolidating the sand into the joints. Dependent on the block being used, it is advisable to use a neoprene protection mat on the vibrating plate. Top up the joints with more sand if required. Tip. During the early life of the pavement, keep topping up the joints with additional joint sand until they become self-stabilised. And here we have the completed installation. So after watching the video, we can find out that the materials to be used in this pavement work are aggregates, polymer bricks, sand, DBM concrete, and interlocking concrete block. Therefore, to process it, we need the help of machine too. So the machine in charge for this pavement work are dumper truck to use to carry the materials to the site. The next is excavator. It's used for excavation work. Then is the grader to create a flat surface. And also vibrator pad compactor used to compact the surface. Last but not least, semi-robotic laying machine will be used for laying the interlocking rock to the ground too. So, let me show you how the machine works. A machine that lays down paving bricks, which is fed with loose bricks, and lays them out onto the road as it slowly moves along. It is electrically powered and available in 13, 16 and 20 foot widths. The machine consists of few moving parts, so noise and maintenance are kept to a minimum. Over time, the bricks at the pavement are exposed to various kinds of weather conditions and changes, thus making the bricks vulnerable to damage. For an instance, bricks that are exposed to sunlight or extreme temperature will have the tendency to disintegrate in the corners. This occurrence is also known as spalling. We also often see interlocking brick pavement are at different heights. This happens when the base where the pavement lays has improper depth and thickness. When pavements are at uneven heights, this will cause water puddles to form on the surface of the pavement. Forming of water puddles are also caused by leaked pipe from a poor drainage system. Pavements can also experience collapsing at the edges when the borders are not installed properly. Edge collapse are also caused by leaked water from poor drainage system, which then washes off the base of the edge. In order to avoid the damages that happen to the interlocking brick road, there are some maintenance and preservation measures which can be taken. For instance, sealers are known as a good maintenance in order to keep the surface of the pavement always looking good. This can avoid from forming of foam molds and staining of the pavement. Edge repairs for the pavement is also essential in order to keep the interlocking brick road in a good condition. When there is a strong border holding the bricks, the pavement will not collapse. Otherwise, the damage on the road can lead to many other difficulties for vehicles. When bricks in the pavements are seen to be rising one or two than the other, paver resets needs to be done. Paver reset is to extract the rising bricks and replace it with a new one to make the pavement all in the same level and height. As a conclusion from the research, we get to know interlocking concrete block pavement technology can provide durable and sustainable block infrastructure where maintenance or conventional pavement are not cost effective. Interlocking concrete block pavement cost is lower than rigid concrete pavement and identical conditions. The initial cost of interlocking concrete block pavement is likely to be equal and marginally higher if compared to bituminous pavement, where low trophic value and high strength subgrade included. We also get to know about process used to install pavement and the machinery involved in the installing progress. The machinery such as Crawler, excavator, dumper truck, and guard grader are used in the installing process. Besides that, we also get to identify damage 
interlocking block and come up with the idea that the cost-effective preservation technique to overcome it.